Good morning, nation. Good morning, business athlete nation. Good morning, Nicole Bernard. Good morning. I'm trying to get us live on Instagram, so that's what I was working on. Excellent. Thank you. Monday morning here. We are in the lab week two. The hook this morning is, is LinkedIn changing? LinkedIn's changing right in front of our eyes. They're adding gaming, maybe news. We're going to talk about that a little bit later today. Nicole Bernard's going to update us. Today's day four for her, her ultra marathon journey, her 100 day training for ultra marathon journey. She was sending me some messages over the weekend. We're going to dig into that as well today. Uh, ideally, so I, I ran a bit yesterday, Nicole. I don't expect you have seen it. So I'm going to run it today for the audience. People have been coming up to me, knocking on my door saying, I love the stuff you guys are putting out there in the lab. What is the business athlete performance lab? Give us a, give us a nugget. So I, I did a little bit yesterday. We're going to run that today. Uh, you know, we all use, well, we either use iPhones or we use Android devices and that technology has major implications in our world. So rumor has it, Apple might continue to weave its way into the Google world of search. We're going to talk about Apple's uh, maybe emphasis, or, or I should say, weaving themselves into the future. Hey, so best cardio workouts for weight loss. Got something like that maybe to talk about today. And of course, we're going to summarize around the, you know, the, the is, is LinkedIn the next home of news? Uh, I, I think it is. Plus, oh, there's some fun music to get, get the mood going here this morning. Plus a few other topics I have on the agenda in case we... At least we have lots of time. So, anyways, let's just step that aside. Nicole, how was the weekend? Oh, it went fast. It was awesome, though. Um, yeah, we had my son's end of year party on Friday, and then he went up skiing with his friends. So it was my first time taking him up to the mountain on Saturday, mm -hmm. and then yesterday cooked like a really awesome stew for St. Patrick's Day and some Guinness cupcakes. Oh, so it flew by, which was great. But. Yeah. So let's, uh, let's, let's, so you cooked a big meal for St. Patrick's day. Is that a, is that a thing? Oh, it's yeah, it's huge. And I'm like 88% Irish. And so growing up, my mom would always do like the <laughs> corned beef and cabbage, but, and then she would put green dye in our mashed potatoes, which was not like very appetizing to look at. And so I was like, all right, let's do something different. And I found this like New York times also had Guinness in it. Um, yeah. stew. <laughs> Like I bought Guinness just as like a cooking ingredient yesterday. <laughs> so anybody tuning in right now, right off the bat, do you put green dye in your mashed potatoes? The, 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 oh. is that, I wonder if that still happens in 2020. Is that still happening in 2024? Probably not. I would assume that. I mean, I don't know, but I mean, it's such a vivid childhood memory. It makes me smile, but like, it's just, yeah, it wasn't very good. That's spectacular. <laughs> so you had a big plate of food and, and there was this, ball of green goodness that was mashed this mashed that's fantastic what about the bird was the bird regular color yeah the, it's corned beef um so yeah oh, that was nice. totally normal which i'm not really a fan of corned beef either so yeah this was with like this we went like just a normal beef route which was i would highly suggest I, yeah recommend all right so i think I, I feel like i might have a morning rant coming on with you nicole so we're just getting to know each other i sent you text over the weekend i'm enjoying getting to know you in front of the audience and mm -hmm. just holding together so you're married you're a wife you got children you have a husband uh i have the same i think i might have a rant okay is it because i don't is it corned beef do you like corned beef oh i love corned beef oh. no so, so here's my rant is it just me or is every month have to have something for the mothers to, to it, like, so February, we have to have Valentine's March. We have to celebrate St. St. Patrick's. Uh, what's going to come in April? It's, oh, it's Easter. It's Easter, it's, it's, but it's actually in March, but oh yeah, it's like barely so the cutoff. Yeah. And I'm not suggesting I'm Grinch. No, I'm not Grinch at all. I, 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 we just have these manufacturers. Society has just corporatized and manufactured yeah. these days into more than what they are nicole oh it's so true yeah well and i mean if you have like there's like a hot like national pepperoni cheeseburger day or something i mean there's like everything has like yes. something every day of the week now yeah it's true it, it's true it, there's something now you're a marketer i'm a marketer and i guess perhaps uh we created that yeah it could be yeah our industry so sorry about that right <laughs> 
right? Because we're all, we're always looking to jump onto something to to, to get people mm-hmm. to, to to buy the message, yeah. right? So I think we went a little too far, though. Like, yeah, perhaps, perhaps, <laughs> yes, perhaps. So anyway, so so that, that sounds like a wonderful uh, a, a wonderful weekend for your family. Yeah, it was it was awesome. It really was. Everybody was finally healthy, and yeah, just so much going on. Um, like I said, that was my first time going up to Mount Hood. Um, and that was a whole other experience, which was super fun. So, so Nicole joins us, uh, business alley nation. Nicole joins us from, uh, the Oregon area of the world. So, you know, while uh, you may think this is local, we're local to Oregon, local to Winnipeg, Canada, but global to all of you that's joining us, whether you're joining us for, for, for a cup of scotch at the end of the day or a cup of coffee to start the day, mm-hmm. Nicole's just outside of Fort Hood. You said your first time to Fort Hood this year, I'm sorry, Mount Hood this year. Yeah, like the, the actual like ski resort area. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So, um, and yeah, it was it was a blast. Um, so many people up there. I wasn't expecting that. Um, but yeah, lots of people watching. Beautiful weather. Like it was like I got sunburned half of my face, which is I see that. Yeah. Coming to I'm the end. Excited, of, but. <laughs> coming to the end of your season, I'm expecting up in that neck neck of the woods. No, am I wrong? Kinda. Well, they just extended it actually through May. So usually they close in April. Um, so yeah, I think there's like a good two months left. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. That's great. That's great. That's great. Uh, and so my weekend was, uh, was, 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 was eventful. Uh, well, it, uneventful in the sense of an entrepreneur building a business these days. It's just, a, it's just a consistency after consistency, it, it seems, but which, which I'm thoroughly enjoying, uh, culminated yesterday. Uh, Carter was on his way through a, through, through a playoff series. Uh, they won their series. They won yesterday, so they won the semifinals. They're off to the finals, so they are going to appear in the finals starting this week, which is which is you know really great for them. So that that was a fun uh, you know journey over the weekend. Uh, what else did I do? I uh, oh watched my local hockey team do some fun things, created some great content. I had a wonderful wonderful meeting with somebody Friday late afternoon who come to me knocking on our door, looking to uh, has a big hairy audacious goal, Nicole. I love those. Yes. Can you hear it or no? I can. Yeah, I can. Yes. Okay. His goal is he wants to take his company from where it is today to something unrecognizable in 10 years. Amazing. It is. And uh, he's been inspired by our conversation. He's been inspired by our messaging and being inspired by the fact that 10 years is coming anyway. So he's like, I, I might as well do something about it. Right. Yeah. And I mean, it sounds like a long time, but 10 years really is like the blink of an eye. It feels like. Well, you have children, right? I yeah. have children. Right? Yeah. <laughs> right. It definitely puts like a, it's very, you can see it. <laughs> it's like, there's yes. definite, yeah. Yeah. So that, that was exciting. So we sat down, we talked on Friday afternoon and, you know, we charted, uh, and you know, and it's interesting because we sat there and he says to me, things are going to happen anyways in the business and, and it's going to be just fine and it's going to organically grow and it's going to do its thing. And you know, Nicole, uh, as he was speaking to me, it just kept putting a big grin on my face for the reason we're doing this show, the reason I'm creating the lab because he wanted to be, I don't want to say pushed. He wanted to be encouraged to think outside of his comfort zone and, 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 and would he, and could he get the support to get there? Right. And I'm like, yeah, let's do it. Right, so we're gonna sit down. We're gonna plan out what maybe that 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 long arc narrative looks like. So, uh, and 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 start building this business uh, in a very different way than I think we would have done it perhaps ten years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, I was again speaking with somebody in the marketing space uh, around social media marketing and marketing in general, and how it's really woven into personal branding, personal connection, and less less just spamming content in front of you. Mm-hmm. 100%. Yeah. And we talked about that last week as well, you know, just like yes. the, yeah, the importance of a personal brand and yeah. It's really true. It's absolutely true. Excellent. Yeah. Um, right. how'd your, how did uh, two dads in the lab go? I didn't get to tune in, but yeah, thank you for amazing. asking. Two dabs was fantastic on Friday. A uh, die and I dug into uh, uh, the question why. And what's the purpose? So funny. So Dai joins the show on Friday. So the CrossFit opening is happening right now. And Dai's a CrossFit coach. So okay. he, uh, I get a text from him, Dai, just before the show starts. He's like, hey, Keith. I'm like, yeah. He's like, uh, I need to maybe call an audible. I'm like, sure. What's up? He's like, I need to maybe just have you do most of the talking because I don't have much of a voice. So I, I, I finished reading the text and then I get a voice message later with his, 
yeah, it's just so you can really tell I can't talk. I'm like, so, oh all right. Yeah, so uh, he, we, we did somewhat of an interview of me, why, what my purpose was, and and why start in the lab. And and it's interesting, Nicole, and not, not to toot the old horns here, maybe this leads into the next segment after we break for a moment here coming up, which is what is the Business Athlete Performance Lab. Two people yeah. said to me, uh, one of my guests in the show knocked on my door after the show ended, and she said, I'm really inspired by the content you guys are creating in the lab because it very much stands out differently on the feeds, especially on LinkedIn, than what others are creating. Mm -hmm. And I was really inspired by that. And then uh, uh, I was, you know, equally encouraged, uh, you know, uh, yet yesterday and over the weekend, uh, but by, by by the continued messaging and people saying, "Hey, you know what what you're doing is is it's resonating with me." So, so, so that's that's so that's, so that's pretty cool, right? It's that's that's a that's a pretty cool thing. So when Di asked why and what's the purpose, uh, I just gave him the full answer. So if you want to hear that answer, go check out Two Dads in the Lab. Uh, that show is actually going to drop this Friday. We ran it live. Uh, we recorded it. We're going to drop it live on Friday. So you want to go dig into the archives? You can go find it on Two Dads in the Lab. We got a live channel going on there, building it up. So, uh, so why don't we break for a minute? Uh, then why don't we come back and why don't we run the, uh, no, we come back. I want to talk to you about goal getters. I want to talk to you about your 100 day journey, day four. Uh, audience, as we know, Nicole Bernard announced on Friday and she was so awesome that she was, uh, she sent me a nice message on Friday that uh, she had started and as you guys know, I we want to hold our team accountable. So we shared it with the world and Nicole was on her way. So Nicole, when we come back, why don't you share your update? What's going on with the weekend? How you're feeling? And then uh, we'll dig into uh, what is the Business Athlete Performance Lab. And then we'll go through some of the headlines for the day. How's that sound? Sounds fantastic. Awesome. Hang tight. We're going to uh, okay. put you guys up for a minute. Go grab your coffee and we'll be back in about a minute. all right so we're, we're, we're just like the sign on the door when you when you when you walk up to a restaurant and they say we're back in five minutes and you say to yourself well when did they post the five minutes sign? was it seven minutes ago what was it five minutes ago was it maybe two minutes ago so when we post the sign that says we'll be back in a minute uh, what you don't know is when actually we left, whether it was three seconds ago, a minute ago. I say that tongue in cheek, but don't you ever wonder you show up at a restaurant? You call you show up at a restaurant, they have that sign up that says we'll be back in three minutes. Yeah, and it's like totally. You don't know exactly when that three minute mark was put up there. <laughs> it's kind of like that. It's like a life hack, eh? So when I put the sign up, it says we'll be back in a minute. Nobody knows if they just tuned in whether we left three, like two minutes ago. So we can right. extend a minute to many minutes. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, so goal getters—a little segment that we're working itself out here in the lab. Uh, funny when, when Keith and Nicole first started a conversation. Originally, the plan was, uh, and I, st I'm still in my head, going to piece this together. But originally, the plan was Nicole was going to Nicole and I were going to we're going to do segments, a show a week to create a new show called Goal Getters, uh, which was going to be a, a, a podcast that was going to drop every ten days. And I'm still envisioning that coming together, uh, but. Uh, since we started this morning show, uh, may maybe things are happening, you know, within audible fashion, as we say in, in the football you yeah. know, language, things are changing at the at the line. So Nicole started her journey on Friday, 100 day journey training for her ultra marathon. Mm -hmm. How did it go? 
Oh, good. Yeah, Friday was great. That was like the first time I'd been running it. I think you saw my video. Like, I actually did walk some of it. But it's... the important thing, like, was that I just started because I think if I were to wait or for everything to be perfect, like that will never come. So yeah, it was it was nice just pulling the trigger, getting started. Um, it's funny too. And then I think this is what's going to help me personally as well, understanding me. that like same thing like with what I said, like on Saturday, I pulled an audible. I didn't run because I was going up to the mountain and I didn't think I'd be there that long, but I ended up being there all day. But it was amazing and there's so many fun memories. So I switched what I would today would be my off day. And so I just took it Saturday. So today I'm going to go and do sprints, you know? And so I think like just being able to like adjust as we're going through, like, yeah. that's what's going to be huge. Um, and then, yeah, yesterday I had a hard run, like my legs were sore. So that felt amazing because it was the first time I genuinely felt like my running self after being sick for like three weeks. <laughs> well, I was just going to yeah. ask you because I know you have been sick. So yeah. you started gradually Monday. You went for a walk. Day one was a walk. Yep. Day two was, was what? Uh, yeah. So Friday was the run walk. Saturday yeah. was nothing. That was like my flex day, my rest day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was yeah. Nice. Day, so yes. Okay. Them. Yeah. Um, yesterday was, yeah, a good, uh, like according to my book, yeah, a seven mile run yesterday and like hard. Um, and then today is uh, sprints. So like speed work. So. Nice. Yeah. Okay. When you do your speed work, Nicole, do you do it on, do you do it on, like, on an incline? Is it flat? You treadmill outside or, or what? So, so take the audience through your speed work. Yeah, so I kind of I change it a little bit. So I'll still do I have like a certain like route that I'll run. And it's yeah. funny, it's streets. And so in between different like streets, like it'd probably be like a good 100 miles, like I mean, 100 miles, yeah, uh, 100 yards. And so I'll do <laughs> sprints in between. And then like, as like you cross the crosswalk, that's kind of my rest. And then I'll sprint again. And then other times we have um, a awesome mountain biking like track up here there's oh, like yeah. miles, and miles so sometimes i'll go into the hills so it depends kind of like how much time i have in a day what i'm kind of feeling so if it's like if i have a bunch of meetings i'll do like the the street route and if i have more time i'll go up into the mountains and do hills so do you so your favorite part of training you know is it uh run walk is it is it speed training is it in, endurance is it just you know i know you're not the biggest fan of strength yeah. But as, as you're on this journey right now, what's your favorite part of of uh, of these of these 100 days so far? Yeah. Um, like yesterday, like the longer runs on like a Sunday morning, like and you know have a audible book in my ear. Um, that's what I really like. Um, just kind of like giving myself some time to get out there and just kind of getting lost in to whatever I'm listening to and and the miles. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I will be adding strength training, so that will that will be an update to come, which I need to, yeah, figure it out. Like I belong to a gym, like I've been paying for a gym for years, but I only go there to like have a beer and play pickleball. So um. <laughs> hold on. I only go to the gym to have a beer and play pickleball. What kind of gym do you go to? That oh, is the, it's the best. It's the best is. gym. All right. So Nicole, as you said, lives in Oregon. So if you all want to go find pickleball and beer gyms, they clearly exist in Oregon. They do. Pickleball is, a, I didn't, I'm late to the pickleball game, but yes. actually a lot of fun. And yeah, our, our gym <laughs> actually just put like a mezzanine levels with drinks so you can watch all the people play pickleball. <laughs> you know, I was thinking in my head this morning that, all right, so I think one of the business channels I can go through, you know, I can go through the, the morning in the lab show in some of the gyms around North America, especially the ones that are serving beer. That's amazing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And a good beer too. It's like local beer. I love it. So. Yeah. Well, yeah. there's something to be said, right? For carbohydrate replacement, you go get a good workout, oh, yeah. you go get a good, you know, go do a good endurance run. I know a lot of endurance athletes after the done big runs. Well, you could probably confirm this: big runs, long endurance runs, refueling back on some beer is not the end of the world, is it? Totally. Yeah. And that little balance, you know, it's like I just worked hard. I'll have beer. Feels great. So yeah. But yeah, awesome. so overall, first three days have been fantastic. That's fantastic. So, and then refreshment. So, and then today, day four, you're doing what again? Sprints. Today's like the speed yes. workout. Okay, yeah. right. Okay. How long will we be doing that today? I don't know. I need to look in my book. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah okay. Whatever she tells me to do. Yeah. So, you have somebody who's, uh, who's, 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 giving you, who's giving you a guide, right? Over the next 100 days, it's going to help uh, chart your journey. Am I correct? Yeah. So, it's a book. It's called... Uh, rise and run so it's actually like a recipe book and she, the girl that there's two women that wrote it and they're both just like amazing runners and this one girl won like the boston i think she has the fastest time for a woman in the new york city marathon um yeah 
the Olympics, all that. She has a 14 week, which equates to 98 days um, of running a marathon workout. So I'm just following that, but also, you know, I only have a few miles longer than a marathon, but again, just kind of adjusting with what she has, but she has a general outline. Um, so yeah, that's what, that's the route I'm going. <laughs> that's excellent. 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 So if you're tuning into Nicole's journey and you're looking to, if you're looking for that nudge, Hey, you know, join us. We're going to be here in the mornings to help you hold yourself accountable. Uh, get your, get your morning started, get some content in your ear, get some inspiration going. And, uh, you, you know, you have Nicole rolling. So, you know, it's, uh, it's certainly a place that, uh, um, you certainly uh, would have some accountability partners here in the lab. So yeah. excellent, excellent. Looking forward to daily updates with Nicole as she, as she continues on this journey. Awesome. Yeah, if anybody wants to join, whether running or not, whatever you want. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Excellent. All right. So it's uh, 22 minutes into the hour. And uh, I think at this point, I am going to run a bit. It is a, uh, a seven, eight minute bit. Uh, it is uh, entitled, What is the Business Athlete Performance? I recorded it yesterday. Uh, so I'm going to run it right now for the audience to to so those that missed it yesterday, I invite you to tune in. And really, I think it's uh, Nicole. It'll set it'll set a follow up discussion uh, that we can continue to maybe answer some questions and continue to paint the picture yeah. for the world what we're that. building here in the lab. All right, so let's do that. I'm going to pull this up, do this here, do this here, and pull it up. And there we go here. Aside, put that music there. Day today, here today. Hey, a short time to answer a question for all of you. What's the question you're wondering? What's the question you're wondering? <laughs> People are asking me, Keith, what's the business athlete performance lab? What is it? I see your branding everywhere the green, the attitude. Everything around it. What is it? What is Babel, Keith? What does it stand for, Keith? I see the motivation. I see the message. I see the inspiration. I see the content you're creating. People knocking on my door saying, what are you doing, Keith? You're always showing up. What is the Business Athlete Performance Lab? Hmm. The modern day. It's a modern day media company. Nah. Yeah. It's a gym. It's a virtual gym. It's the world's first hybrid space for you, for creators, for entrepreneurs, for business leaders, for people looking to achieve their biggest, most audacious goals. It's the same thing you do in a real gym. When you, when you, when you walk into a real gym, you go there to lose weight to get faster, to get stronger, to meet people, to socialize. Well, the world's a different place now. Places like remote work, I'm sorry. Situations like remote work, hybrid work, digital nomads, all this different kind of work exists where people are distributed, dispersed all over the place. Part of tribes, not part of tribes, independent, sitting somewhere, not sitting somewhere, feeling connected, not feeling connected, all of that different place. So I know when I look around, I'm like, hey, wh wh where's, where's that virtual space that I can go to meet people, to be held accountable, to help me achieve the next biggest goals of my life? It's called the lab. It's called the Business Athlete Performance Lab. That's what it is. It's a place you come to achieve the biggest goals of your life. How? You're going to be surrounded by a team of people that are going to help you achieve those goals. You're going to put your goal on the table. We're going to stand right next to you and put, put the pillars in place to help you achieve it. Because I know that if you're here, I know that if you're considering joining the lab or being part of the lab, you already believe in the four pillars. You already believe in the Business Athlete Manifesto. You already are in business. You already are have some type of athletic interest or want to have some type of athletic interest. And listen, we're all athletes. Can you walk? Can you move your arms? 
Maybe you can't walk, but you can move your arms. Maybe you can't even move your arms, but you can walk. The point is, if you can move, you're an athlete. Maybe you're into performance, not the end of the goal, but just progressing. Performance, progression. Maybe you're intrigued by what's happening in the world of AI. Maybe you're all about adventure. Business, athletics, AI, adventure, performance, some pop culture, progress, just moving forward. All those ideas to help you get forward. How about lifestyle, longevity? You know that if these principles appeal to you, this is a place for you. Then you're a business athlete. You don't even know it. You're a business athlete. And if you're a business athlete, this is the place where you belong. What will you get out of the business athlete performance lab? You'll hit your biggest goals. Maybe maybe your biggest goal is to go run an ultra marathon like Nicole Bernard is. Maybe your goal is just to do a marathon this year. Maybe your goal is to climb a mountain. Maybe your goal is to build a personal brand. Maybe your goal is to help take your company to the next level. Maybe you're looking around, stuck, not knowing how to move forward. Maybe you need somebody to show up with you every single day. Listen, there's, 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 there's no question that I show up. Just go look at my feed. Go look at my history. That's what we stand for in the lab. It's a safe space for you to show up. So the Business Athlete Performance Lab, it's your virtual gym. It's your virtual space. It's your virtual safe space. In the coming days, weeks, months, we'll be unveiling the the Business Athlete Academy, a place where creators can monetize their knowledge and experience and invite others that want to learn from that experience. We're going to do that through selling courses here in the lab. Again, just like if you were heading on down to the gym, you're going to go do a program to get stronger. You're going to go do a program to get faster. You might go do a program to become a better person. Well, hey, we got those same programs here in the lab. They're virtual. They're hybrid. Get them from us, go do them in the real world. Use us as your support mechanism when you're not in the real gym. You're going to spend one hour, two hours a day in the real gym. Maybe you need the lab to help you get there. Maybe you need the lab to help you be that accountability partner. That's what you get from our content. That's what you get from us here in the Business Athlete Performance Lab. We're doing things differently here. We're standing out on the feed. Join us. You want to stand out. Join us if you want to get to your next. There's no doubt. You join the lab, you're going to get to your next. You're going to help yourself be accountable. You're going to help yourself hit those goals. So there you have it. That's the Business Athlete Performance Lab. It's that virtual gym, that virtual space. So if you're a creator, if you are a creator, if you're an entrepreneur, you're a business leader, you're somebody who's stuck. You're somebody who's trying to trying to get next. Come knock on my door. Come hit me in the DM. I want to help you. I want to help you. I've been helping people since I started this lab. They've been knocking on my door. We want to help, Nicole. Uh-huh. We want to help. And we, so I love, so while I'm listening to the message again, it, it struck me. You have a gym membership. Yeah. Yes, I do. <laughs> no, that's which is great. no, but that's fantastic because you're you're proving my point. You're you're proving my point. You have a real life gym membership, as do many people. Yet we sometimes need associates, friends, accountability partners to help activate that real world gym membership. For sure. Yeah. Right. So you're paying the 30, 50, 20, whatever it is a month, somebody's paying for their gym membership, sitting on their desk, sitting in their wallet. And uh, if it is not being used, there really is no value in that membership. Yeah, totally. So the ambition, the lab is to unlock the value in that. Mm -hmm. For sure. What's so funny, which is like what a little bit of like accountability or a little like push 
you know, like how it can get us over that edge to just start doing that. Like I, like I said, I've had this gym membership for over a year and I don't know, I'm actually finally going to start using it for what it is. <laughs> Like yes. what's supposed to be. Yes. I'm excited. But yes. Yeah. Well, that's good. That's good. I and I, I love that you said that it just it's just taking a step, taking that first push, right? Yeah. I was admittedly, I'll confess to you, a little stressed about going into today's show. Who knows why? We're just our little show here. Mm -hmm. Uh, because I'm striving to make a one percent better every single day. And uh Sometimes I have to remind myself that we got to go from 1% to 1%. We can't go from one to five and you got to just take the step, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, it's like, oh my God, I wanted, to, I, I wanted to be further ahead this morning than I was, but here's where we are and, and here's what we have. So, but the yeah. point is we just got started. Yeah. I mean, I feel like it's only been a week, but it feels longer, but yes. all, it's amazing. <clears throat> and my alarm, when my alarm went off at 4.15 this morning, it was way easier this week than last week. <laughs> <laughs> That's spectacular. That's spectacular. So you heard the message. You've heard my messaging around the lab. Um, to those listening and tuning in, uh, it's a newer concept. Do you get it? Me? Personally? Yes. I do. I, I'll be honest. When I first heard it, when we first met months ago, yes. I didn't quite get it. Um, but yeah, no, now I do. Um because yeah, I think, I don't know why I, I just, it got in my own head and I was like, AI I, performance lab. I'm not really sure, but now understanding of like, it's more accountability. And yes, like, I feel like there's a theme, like, because we yes. have business athletes. Um, and I don't know, it, it makes total sense to me now. <laughs> I, so, so, and I think that, uh, so admittedly when, when we, when we first launched, uh, uh the lab there, it, it was very much a wide net and, uh, it was as much to uh, listen in the old world, you know, in the world of marketing, ADA, attention, interest, desire, action. I was like, okay, let's go get some attention. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's go see if we can generate some interest. And let's do that through uh, creating some innovative messaging, innovative marketing, and and see if we can get talk people talking about, uh, uh, you know, the, the things around business and athletics and those those underlying themes and principles and performance. And then AI shows up in the world and changes everything around business and athletics and uh well every pillar right and and i think this is a good topic that we weave into coming up here with how, how news is changing yeah right uh like you're not gonna i've no desire to give somebody the weather on this show because the weather is instant weather and sports that, that that but there's but we all still want content to consume we want content to consume from friendly voices we trust right so the lab is it's 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 a modern day media company wrapped up around these themes of accountability mm -hmm. right i know i grew up with with you know like a morning show or, or regular morning shows or regular morning television content that was that was there that was that was around it was friendly it was friendly voices it was trustworthy content mm -hmm. and i think as the world continues to look for stuff like that maybe we can we can create content like that for them so my desire with our audience here is 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 somebody who who drinks the Kool Aid that we're serving up here in the lab. Mm -hmm. Right? You 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 adhere to these principles, and ultimately, you're looking for somebody that you're looking for people that will help you achieve your goals. Right? So, and that that's that's the monetization the monetization aspects here. We're going to be launching Apple HQ, which is the virtual hybrid creator space. My plan here, Nicole, I think this week is to, I'm hoping Tuesday, Wednesday, maybe tomorrow, Wednesday, get the ducks lined up. We'll do, we'll do a big demo. We'll yeah. HQ. We'll do it online here. We'll do a, like, we'll do like a webinar. We'll show it off. We'll show people they can see when they come into this virtual creator hybrid space. I know you knocked on my door last week and said, Hey, why don't I use it for my bubbles biz? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So I think we do that this week as well, but listen, let's take a break. Let's take a break for a minute, uh, and then when we come back, I want to get into topics of the day uh, under under these principles of business, athletic, performance, lifestyle. i got a few things to talk about. I want to talk about five best cardio workouts. I want to talk about the changing news, how LinkedIn's changing. LinkedIn's changing right in front of us, mm -hmm. and some people might not even know what's changing. So let's come back in a minute and talk about that, all right? Awesome. Hang tight. See you back in a minute.
All right, Keith and Nicole back. Mornings in the lab in the business athlete performance lab. Hey, coming up today at noon, Nicole, live stream. I have a LinkedIn expert. Mm. Yes. That's awesome. Naomi Rose Everly joining me here today in the noon streaming uh, X LinkedIn, YouTube, all the platforms. Uh, good segue to what I want to talk about. A uh, little typo on the screen around LinkedIn. Um, but uh, yeah, so Naomi is joining us today. I'm excited about that, that conversation. Uh, I know since I have dug into the platform, I've seen it changing in front of my eyes. And I want to talk about that with you right now. Did you know that LinkedIn plans to introduce gaming? To the platform i had no idea um that's interesting like what kind of gaming like that's what i want to know yeah so puzzles uh word type things crosswords yeah so like just things to you know engage and get people to stick like puzzle based games something oh. that, that keeps people on the platform longer yeah and like brain games i could see how they would do that um yes. almost like the you know entrepreneur business owners creators on there like not just almost like zoning out, like my son plays Fortnite a lot, but like yes. a great game. Yeah. Yes. What do you think about that? What, what's your thoughts about that? Like, I like it. Is, isn't LinkedIn like a professional network, Nicole? It's always oh, professional. Why are they putting games on the network? Yeah. But I mean, I kind of like that. So you like, you're waiting for a meeting to start and you're on LinkedIn. So you like, I don't know, use your brain a little bit to, you know, ne- like knock out some crossword puzzles. I yes. don't know. I kind of like it. Yeah, I, I do too. It seems natural to me. It seems like very much a no brainer. Yeah, I could see though if they test it and it's not super popular, like if they take it off at some point. Yes, um, absolutely. So. Yeah, I, I can see that as well. I can absolutely see that as well. The second thing that LinkedIn, uh, well, so I think we touched upon this <laughs> on Friday that LinkedIn now allows you to sponsor other authors' uh, posts, right? Yeah, that's cool. That is cool. Well, so what I think to somebody listening who might not be following what I'm saying is, is try to hear me clearly. So Keith and Nicole, in theory, don't work together. Keith, and so Nicole, you know, is part of NB Marketing. Uh, Keith is part of the Business Athlete Performance Lab. Yes, we're collaborating and doing things together, but just follow my line of thinking. I could take Nicole's post and I could sponsor it, her as a thought leader, and then pay for her basically tapping onto her thought leadership by sponsoring it. It, it it really turns advertising and thought leadership on its head because what it's saying is that, oh, I really believe in what Nicole has to say. I'm really endorsing what Nicole has to say. So I'm going to put money behind what Nicole has to say and sponsor that. It's pretty powerful. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm just waiting for Nike to come sponsor our content. So. That's it. That's exactly it. Hello, Nike. Come knock on our door. Come knock on our door. Uh, so the second way LinkedIn is changing right in front of us, and this to me um, – Frankly, Nicole, uh, I think fits in exactly with what uh, we are doing here in the lab. And, you know, I found an article this morning uh, in Fast Company, and it talked about, the, the author talked about how, you know, we both know Facebook and X has largely given up on news. Mm-hmm. Right? They're like, no, we don't want nothing to do with news. We're done with news. It's, we don't want to have to moderate it and deal with it. It is ugly, and we're not going to deal with it. Well, interestingly enough, it looks like LinkedIn uh, is weaving its way to doing some things with news, perhaps in a way that is has not been done that way in the past. So um, displaying it differently, uh, uh, using newsletters, uh, bringing content into the platform in, 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 in different ways. But According to a Pew survey released last November, a little under a quarter of LinkedIn users users say they get their news from LinkedIn. Mm. Yeah, I like how they have it like on my screen, like on the right hand side, like little bullet yep. points of like what's trending kind of. And so, yes. I mean, so yeah, yes. it catches my eye, I click on it. But I mean, it's kind of cool to see it right there. According to the same survey, uh, LinkedIn consumers are fairly evenly split between men and women. Uh, overwhelmingly liberal, and almost 70% of them are under 49. Wow. Yeah. So even when the platform may feel like an artifact from a different era of the web, where social networks function primarily as directories of personal contacts, uh, this appears to be changing. Um, You know, you you look, what's also changing is uh, the amount of video content appearing on LinkedIn. 
-hmm. right? More video content is appearing on the site more than ever as well. So, um, what other comment Jones LinkedIn says that uh, they're working directly with over 400 publishers, and those 400 publishers have gained a combined 240 million followers wow. while they're you know introducing these new types of news products uh, to their platform. The last thing that I found quite uh, powerful at the end of this article, and I'll share this article on our Substack here this morning if you guys want to dig into it. But uh, two things, Nicole. So LinkedIn's real people. Yeah. Right? So perhaps less toxicity with sharing content, maybe more natural conversation with real people around sharing news and so forth. But what I found most striking about why perhaps there is not only puzzles being introduced into LinkedIn, but now more news being LinkedIn, mm -hmm. it's this. Yeah. People at work are desperate for something to do other than work. It's true. Yeah. So when you're on when you're on LinkedIn and your employer walks by, your employer sees you, you know, I hate these remote employers that are monitoring their people's workforce workforce. Yeah, I, I've never understood that. Like micromanagement, like I don't get it, but yeah, but but even like putting software on your machine to know where you've went and 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 what you've done. Yeah, ew. Um, that's not cool. <laughs> Isn't it? That's just not cool. I, I don't, that, that's never really, I've never really understood that. Right. I, I needed to know where Nicole went to, what she did. But the point is, if you're spending time on LinkedIn, where well, you're not on Facebook, you're not on X, you're not on, on Instagram. And maybe it's a way you can get away from your employer knowing what you're doing. Right. Totally. Um, so did you grow up with Paul Harvey? Did y'all have Paul Harvey in Canada? No, I don't know. Who's, who's Paul Harvey? You're gonna have to Google him. So he was um, like the trusted voice of me growing up. Um, mm -hmm. Like he had a talk show like on the radio. And so like yes. I remember listening to it on the way to school and he would share neat stories. Um, I don't know, he was on the air for like ever. Um, let me see if I can like actually, and I just uh, remember like- I to him. I know who you're talking, was he a morning, a morning guy, right? Yeah, and he's like, and you know, what was his sign off? It was like, now you know the rest of the story, I think. Um, it was awesome. So sorry. That just made me think of like, you know, the morning people that I, I always grew up with. Yes. Well, so, and, and my ambition is to do the same thing. So, yeah. cause here, here's how I grew up with this content. I grew up with this content in the traditional sense of, well, it was news, mm -hmm. but, but it was in the background. It was in there for me to listen to. It was, I, I, I have no illusion that somebody's sitting there staring at Keith Nicole on their couch, <laughs> watching us in the morning. But what I'm hoping is they're putting this on in the background. They're driving to work. I've had people say to me, hey, I put you, put you in the car as they drove to work in the morning. It's awesome, right? I want us to be that different choice, right? Because we can get news everywhere. You can, you can find it in your local stations, your local radio stations. Listen, we're giving you different content that I hope is inspirational, helps you be accountable. We want you to feel engaged with it. The content is going to be built around our pillars of, you know, business themed content, motivating content, athletic AI adventure. We're going to talk about our adventures, the pillars of our lab. But but at the end of the day, Nicole, yeah, it's a, it's a media company giving people content, mm -hmm. right? And we want to be those friendly voices for people. So totally, yeah. Let's pivot from LinkedIn to another headline. I talk. I, I want. I put in our feed this morning. Embracing the era of video first marketing, five undeniable consumer stats. I got some, I know how much you love Nicole Bernard doing video. Love it. <laughs> you're getting better at it. Like, even just today, like a weekend, you're just becoming even more of a natural. Okay, good. I'm glad it seems that way. <laughs> Anybody watching would say, yeah, absolutely. There, it's, 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 she's fantastic. So uh, it's funny. I got, I got, I got Shannon Houghton commenting on our, uh, uh, co commenting on, uh, I, I still can't get, get I, I've got my ADHD here right now, Nicole. I got the old squirrel distraction. Mm -hmm. I did the show with Shannon, Shannon Houghton last week. And I'm, I'm talking about the lab and the complexity of building this media company. Well, she just sells peaches and makes millions of dollars selling peaches. Amazing. So I'm just doing the wrong things. I know. I just need peaches. Just sell peaches, Matt. Just sell peaches. All right. The era of video first marketing, five undeniable consumer stats. Uh, 
I needed to share this because I'm just continuing to you know, perpetuate our business model right in front of the audience here about why video is important. 62% of consumers favoring video to learn about new products. Wow. So Nicole, you're a marketer. The message from marketers is clear. Video is not just an option. It is a necessity. Uh -huh. You have to. Uh -huh. Right? Listen, video does what? It stimulates the eyes, the ears, every single emotion, your tone, your context. Again, back to the, our beginning of our, our conversation this morning, Nicole, sitting down with, my, uh, with, 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 uh, with somebody who says, hey, I'd like some help achieving this big, hairy, audacious goal with, my, with, 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 our, with our company. One of the simple things we're going to do, Nicole, with him is we're going to create personalized videos for his customers that join yeah. the business mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. and personalized videos throughout the year from, from the team, right? Just to create that connection, mm -hmm. right? So uh, again, but using video because he wants to elicit that emotional connection with you that when it shows up in your inbox, you see his ex facial expression is, you know, you get all, you, you get a real connection, right? Yeah, totally. Right. So, uh, 80% of consumers <laughs> state they want more product videos, uh, mm. not less. We want videos is what consumers are telling you as a marketer. Do not give me less videos. Give me more. Okay. 51% yeah. of consumers are saying that they are likely to engage with video content and make a purchase if there's video. Mm. Wow. 40% of consumers prefer personalized video content. There you go. Not just generalized. It's so easy to make personal content. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I know you have done a great job. I know we go back and forth sending video messages to each other. And it's just, you know, once you kind of get in the habit of, of just picking up the phone and talking to it, it becomes real easy to get a message across with so much, with, with all those senses that it's, you're like, oh yeah, why wouldn't I do that? Right. Yeah. And, 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 and audience, your customers are expecting it. Don't get caught up in all the big production. The other production is nice, but yeah. get just video in front of your customers. Yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. Here's another one for you. Um, the presence of video on brand websites can significantly sway consumer behavior. 40% of consumers are more likely to purchase from brand websites that incorporate video content. Crazy. Yeah. So the bottom line is video is no longer simply a tactic. It's a necessity. Yeah, it's true. What's it's so funny because like we've talked about this too. Like I would rather read than watch a video, but I think it's just because I'm old. But yes. like it's crazy. I mean, you can clearly the numbers are saying, um, yeah. And obviously I know video is so important, but just, yeah. Thinking about but, people's preferences, how they're shifting. But I think you're, you're, you're so right with that statement because I too have grown up with reading my morning news and reading, 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 mm -hmm. right? Uh, yet it's clear that we're, that video is, well, there's just so much more going on, right? And and sometimes it's not easier than reading, but there's just more going on. And I look, I look at my kids and I look at the generations, your kids and so forth. They're not yep. reading. No, yep. they are not. Well, and I get it too. I mean, it's it's quicker. It's more efficient to watch a 60 second video than to sit there and read, you know, like a five minute PDF. But is um, it though? So let me challenge you. But is it though? So, you know, my wife and I had this conversation yesterday and, and, and you know, I can, I can read something real quick and I can digest it and consume it real quick. Yeah. But if you give me a 60 second video, do I have to watch the whole 60 seconds? Do you follow me? Yeah, no, totally. And uh, it also might be like, I'm a visual learner. Like it doesn't stick yes. to me as well if I just hear it. So for me, reading does take a little longer, but it's also able, like I, I'm able to process it better um, than just listening to a video. But yeah, I mean, I, again, too, like I don't, if it's like a 60 second video, I likely won't watch all of it just because I, I don't prefer that. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, it has to maybe, I guess, deal with the people and how they like to consume it, you know? It's true. It's true. And listen, you have to, to anybody who's, who, who, who doesn't believe what we're saying. And I, and I would suspect most believe that video is the future. You have to look no further than just what's around us, right? Like look at yeah. TikTok, Instagram, uh, you know, 
e- even what we're doing here on the show, even on streaming onto LinkedIn. Well, and here's a good segue, actually, as we wrap up, maybe, you know, so, you know, we're a few minutes left here in the show here this morning, Nicole, but he- he- here's a great way to emphasize this point. Did you know, and I did not know this until, where's my notes here uh, this morning? I got something for you. Uh, X, Elon's X. So last year, X took a bold step and not only did they evolve beyond tweets, but they've also begun video streaming. So if you look at the X app, it dominates, it's eight to 10 visits involve video streaming, but get this, they are adding an app to Samsung and Fire TV so that when you boot up the television, you're going to have the X app just streaming video. So we're going to wake up tomorrow and X is going to be no different than YouTube right. Right, from a video perspective. So there should be no no doubt about the the push to video. Uh, and I, 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 I logged into X yesterday and it struck me uh, as, I, as I scrolled through the feed how much video there is. And it's just like watching television these days. Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of the social platforms are like that, you know? I mean, whether it's like the shorts that just go yes. or like the stories or yes. it's so many, it's in different formats, but it's everywhere. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Instagram, Facebook, all these platforms are just yesterday's TV channels. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's all they are, just displaying content in a different way uh, to, to gather our attention and our audience. So uh, look no further over the, over the next year, we're going to see X rolling out some uh some apps to consume content for for uh to consume the x content so uh all right let's uh let's give some so again ambition is to give tips as well uh athletic longevity lifestyle tips we got a few minutes left to wrap up why don't we do- drop five best cardio workouts for weight loss Wait. what do you think is one of them um i would think running but i probably wouldn't think that first but like um i don't know our hit workouts is that cardio or like the rowing machines that oh, i think burns yes yeah. so, exactly so you know I, I, listen i i think the real when, when i give these 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 articles out just recognize nation this isn't gospel right right this is you know i'm not telling you that this is coming from uh the ultimate source of fitness Right, I, I've I've sourced this content out on the internet. It's stuff that I read. We're talking about some relatively evergreen content that is that is. Uh, I don't want to use the word common sense because not everybody considers common sense to be common. But I want to. Uh, it's to me, it's to be motivational, inspirational, and if anything, Nicole, activating. Yeah. Somebody's sure. like, hey, you know what? Right. Okay. Fuck, I got a few minutes today. I'm gonna go for a walk. Mm-hmm. Right. So. You yeah, mentioned like, listen, and whatever resonates with you, go that way. You know, exactly, stick it up. Exactly, yeah. exactly, exactly. All right. So you said it. Rowing. Rowing ignites tons of calories. I could see that. It tons. It ignites tons of calories. Mm-hmm. Uh, kettlebell swings. That's another busy one. Kettlebell swings. Mm-hmm. Do you like kettlebell swings? Um, I, I don't have much experience with them. Um. But <laughs> I will soon. <laughs> yes, you will. You will. Uh, kettlebell deadlifts, stick with the kettlebell theme, kettlebell swings, kettlebell deadlifts, both full body workouts that will uh, get your heart rate going, get your body moving. So those are some things. And very little space. Yeah, yeah. You go buy yourself some kettlebells. You got a few feet around you. You can, you can get a, a great yeah. cardio workout done. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Uh, reverse lunges. Again, don't need a lot of space. Yep. Get up, get up from your desk. Do some lunges back and forth, five minutes, ten minutes here and there. Before you know it, you get thirty minutes done, and you got your you, you got some cardio, you know, burned off, right? So, air squats. Do you like air squats? Yeah, I do. Body yeah. weight squats. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I hate this one. I'm going to tell you about burpees. Ew! Oh god, I hate burpees like bad. <clears throat> yeah, uh, I'm not a big fan of burpees. Yeah. Uh, squat jumps. Yeah, those hurt too, but I don't hate them as much as burpees. Why? <laughs> Nicole loves working out. You can see it here in the lobby. <laughs> <laughs> Farmers carry and walking lunges, a few extra things you can do to get your cardio workouts for weight loss done. Nicole, we got a couple minutes left wrapping up. Didn't get to all my topics. I'm still I'm still getting getting used to the rhythm here, which is good. We're gonna get better every single day. Speaking of cardio, I have an ass kicker coming up. 
What are you doing? I got my strength on this morning before our show. I'm going to go jump onto the old Peloton. I got a 60 minute power zone ride. Whoa. Which oh, takes okay. me into takes me into zone. Yeah, it's not fun. It takes me to zone three, four, five. It's gonna be higher intensity. Uh, so I did an endurance ride on Saturday. It was a long night, did 90 minutes on the bike on Saturday. Oh. Today I got a 60 minute zone ride. It's gonna be heavy and hard. But hey, you know, we're in the business athlete performance lab. So that's mm -hmm. what we gotta do. Where do you where do you where are you off to next? Um, yeah, I got sprints, but that's not till a little later. Um, yeah, I I don't know. Like, it, it's funny because I was giving myself last week to like figure out the routine of like getting up yeah. early and now this, yes. and I'm still kind of like finding my way through it. So, which is, which is fine. Um, One day at a time, time, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, I hear somebody, like, I, I can hear my son, he's up, which is pretty early for him. But so, yeah, I don't know, probably do some mom things and then dive into some work and then sprint. And sprint and sprint and sprint. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, listen, let's uh, let's sprint our way out of here this morning. We're going to wrap it up an extra minute. So here's why. So now what we're going to do is uh, I'll share some behind the scenes magic with everybody who's tuning in right now. So my ambition with the show is to beat since we're, you know, I didn't get into we'll get into this tomorrow uh, with the lab, the modern day media company. Uh, we are beating legacy media companies with their with their content processes. So my ambition with this content nation is to get it wrapped up and packaged and into your podcast machines, you know, your beta, your VHS, Nicole, right? Those, those, yep. those, those yeah. So, and cassette and eight track. Like, so the goal here is to get the show finished, get it recorded onto a vinyl, cassette, tape, DVD, CD, VHS, beta, all of the old school platforms. So you guys have every choice possible to listen to Keith and Nicole by 15 minutes after the end of this hour. Awesome. Power of AI. So we're going to get out of here. You guys enjoy your day. We'll be back tomorrow morning. Keith and Nicole, mornings in the lab. We go Monday to Friday, 7 a.m. till 9 a.m. on LinkedIn, X, YouTube, Twitch, all the platforms, Spotify, app podcasts, and so forth. Tell your friends. You want to be guests on the show? You want to sponsor the show? We'd love to have you aboard. Listen, you can see what we're doing here. There's no doubt. Come join us. Nicole, we'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Have a good day. Have fun doing your sprints. Yeah, have fun on your ride. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thanks. See you later. <laughs> Bye-bye.